Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm sitting on a bench at an abandoned railway station in Derby. This was the Mark Eaton Park Railway. It was a 15 inch gauge railway which ran for about three quarters of a mile round the rather vast Mark Eaton Park. Now it's rather sad to see it like this because it's only opened in 1989. So when you think most of the disused railway stations we go and see, they closed in the 50s and 60s with beach and some were before that, some were after that. But this opened after most of them were closed. So it really feels sort of even sadder in a way to see it like this. There are actually still some sleepers in between the rag works. Some sleepers are still there. Now just up here, there is a section of track where you can just sort of see two lines. That's actually because there's track and the weeds are growing up between them. So that's a section of track they haven't been able to lift because it's concreted in. Building over there behind us, that's the famous trains model railway. That is worth a visit. It's a double O gauge model of Chinley in the 1950s. I'll point out that isn't actually anything to do with this railway. So, um, you know, it's a shame this railway closed, but they were a separate thing and they're still there. So there is a railway presence here in Mark Eaton Park still, which is great, but unfortunately you're only able to watch model trains. And I have been in there, I've made a video, so I'll post that. So do watch that and do come and visit it. But if you want to do the Mark Eaton Park Railway, you're going to have to do what I do. You have to follow it on foot where the railway line used to go. So there's the bench that's still in situ, which probably for the time being no one's going to wait for a train. It'd be nice if they just rebuild it and reopen it because the park is... I mean, I probably wouldn't have come here if it wasn't for the famous trains model railway exhibition. Um, you know, so people do come to parks if there's a, a railway of some sort. So without a railway the park visitor numbers no doubt will have dropped. Anyway, so there's a section of track still in situ. I think it's because the rails are concreted in at that end, so it's one long piece of rail. That's why they haven't taken them out. And you can just see there's another set there. So this would have been the end of the run-round loop. The run-round loop would have actually been on this level crossing. So I think the sheds were probably in there, and I believe they've had to demolish them because... Um, they were in a bad state of repair, which again wasn't the railway's fault because the railway only leased the sheds from the council. These are actually old army sheds, so that one has the famous trains model railway. Not sure what that one's for. Um, so crossing here, you can just see where the point lever would have been for the end of the run round loop. So standing here, you can look back into the railway station with some tracks still in situ. All the sleepers are gone from the track bed, but the ballast is there, so certainly. For the, for the moment it's going to be easy to trace so my plan is I'm going to follow this railway and um, I'll do some more recording as we get further around the old track bed I'm not going to record the whole track bed because that may take a while so let's see where we go to next so here we are, we've come up the track bed a little bit you can see the trees are starting to encroach on the track bed a bit we're about 100 or so yards from the railway station you can just see out there the road in and out of Mark Eaton Park and over there that is the Derby Ring Road but coming up to here there are now still some sleepers in situ so I don't know how long there will be how long we'll be able to follow the track with sleepers but it's quite pleasant I and mean, it's quite a clear mark there was a railway this little cutting here it must have been a really pleasant ride though just going you know, gently through the woodlands, you know, on a steam or diesel train. They originally had a steam loco from the Exmoor Steam Railway. They also had a Baby Delta, which I believe once ran, ironically, another railway which was closed. The one that Steam Town in Carnforth, before it came the West Coast Railway's depot it is, when it was more of a railway attraction. So, that's strange that that loco, I'm not sure where it is now, but let's hope wherever it is now, that railway doesn't close. Coming up here, it's interesting, look, we can see a sign ahead of us saying whistle, so again, there's more, something else surviving. It's nice to see so much survives. So uh, I'm not sure if there was a crossing here, but they obviously want you to whistle, and I can't see any crossing ahead. Did it say whistle on this side? Yeah, it looks like it did, so I can understand it saying whistle if you're going this way, because you're coming sort of towards the main entrance of the park, and people are more likely to cross across the track bed but I'm not sure why it said whistle up there but what I'll have to do I'm going to carry on walking up the track bed a bit further and uh, we'll see where what we find next
We've now come probably another couple of hundred yards up the track bed. As you can see, we're quite close to the busy road still that runs round the edge of Derby. And just on this side, you can see the rest of the park. So it's kind of got this, you know, half sort of um, urban feel to it. I mean, this makes it look very urban. So now we've got a footbridge or the circular ramp up to the footbridge almost going over the railway. I should think that's fairly unique for a miniature railway to pass a structure like that. The only other one I can think of is in Milton Keynes at Willan Lake. The miniature railway there that goes underneath a dual carriageway and then comes back. So it's not 100% unusual but it is it's certainly different, let's put it that way. You can see here there would have been a crossing here. So um, I didn't see a whistle sign back there but it looks like up there there's a whistle sign but you can see where they've had to take the rails out and they've put concrete in to um, fill the space where the rails would have been. So there's the track there. I think this is a whistle sign just up here. We shall see in a second. Yeah, it's another whistle sign. So we're now going to follow on along the track up here. I can already see the next whistle sign. Certainly the sleepers don't appear to be in this section. Further back there where we did find them, they were in situ. And then we went through an, another very shallow cutting and they all appeared to be gradually getting buried in the mud, probably like when it rains water perhaps washes in, into the cutting. But now they appear to have gone completely. Now there's a more interesting one here. It says whistle and it says bridge. Because here the railway crosses the Mackworth Brook. Again we get a very clear view of the semi-urban nature of the railway. The fact that we're passing the ring road. So this is where the railway would have crossed the Matworth Brook. And you see on that side it's a fairly you know, smallish river but on this side it's a rather large lake because this is the main lake of Mark Eaton Park. So it's quite, it has quite varied scenery for a railway that's only three quarters of a mile long. It looks like now that the track bed's going to run for a bit longer quite close to the road so I'm going to carry on making the video further up the line so let's see where we get to next. We've now come away from the main Derby Ring Road and it's a lot sunnier now, now we're out in the open. And I think where we've come up to here, this must be the old halfway passing loop. You see the, the lake there, which is fed by the Matworth Brook. So we've kind of come, we started over there, we've so far come all the way around here. And it looks as though the railway then goes off into the trees and um, it terminates somewhere over there. So. I'd say I must have walked a third of a mile, maybe a bit more, maybe half, well the line's three quarters of a mile, but although this is where the um, passing loop would have been, doesn't necessarily mean it's halfway round, so we'll have to work that one out when I get to the end. It looks as though, just up here, when you get to the end of the passing loop, the railway goes into another shallow cutting, but slightly deeper than the other shallow cuttings we've already seen. So as we leave the passing loop behind, you can just see another little depression in the grass. That's where the point lever would have been. I'm not sure if they change the points each time, because I never ever saw this railway when it was up and running, or if what happened was the points were sprung. So one way you'd only go into the loop one way, the other way you could only go in the other way. Quite a lot of miniature railways do operate to that sprung system. There's a fair going on on the other side of the lake. That's where that music you might be able to hear 
is coming from. It's not really my kind of thing. I'd much rather explore the remains of an old miniature railway than go to a fairground. So um, everyone has their own own preferences. So as we now enter the disused shallow cutting, one thing I've been wondering, and if I don't know if any of my viewers might be able to help me on this one, was this cutting dug out for the railway, or was this cutting already here? And the other thing my viewers might be able to tell me is, I know the railway opened in two stages, it opened in 1989, but was extended in 1986, so I imagine this is probably the newer half, as the sheds were where we started, but that's not necessarily the case. So maybe the railway originally terminated at that passing loop. So maybe this was dug out, I think it was, um, yeah, it was in 1996 when it extended. So maybe this section was, was built then, I'm not entirely sure. So again, anyone who knows, I'll take my sunglasses now because we're in the woods. Anyone who knows, comment and tell me, please. There's another slightly more vandalised whistle and bridge sign. So we must be going to cross another watercourse, I should have thought. We're just coming up to the bridge now. I'm not sure if when the railway was running, as if I don't think it was fenced off because miniature railways don't have to be. So whether people could walk over the bridges and trains could run on them at the same time, I'm not entirely sure. But again, if anyone knows, was the track bed in the middle or was it to one side? If you know, please comment and tell me. You almost fit two tracks over here. The rather, what probably is normally quite a small stream following yesterday's heavy rain is um, flowing a bit faster and the water looks more murkier. What this has made me think though doing this is this is a railway that I didn't, you know, I was too late to, to visit it and I'm slightly annoyed with myself about that. I thought if only I'd come here, you know, three years ago. If I'd come here three years ago, we'd be doing this on the train and this would be a video about a miniature railway stroke narrow gauge railway. It wouldn't be this sad, oh, I didn't get to go on this miniature railway kind of thing. So it's led, led me to think to two things, really. One is, there's a lot of miniature railways that have come and gone. You know, since I've been interested in railways, miniature railways have closed. Some I never got to go to, ones like Dobwells. Yeah, I'm really disappointed I missed out on going to Dobwells. There's been others which I've made emergency visits to, such as Western Supermare. That took two attempts. The first one I went, it wasn't running. The second one I went, it was running, and then not long after that, it closed altogether. There's a part here. That's about the railway not being fenced. It looks like it was fenced just where there was a major crossing. So there's been people that crossed here. There's a few more sleepers. So they just sort of keep you away from it, really, where people are more likely to be. And the rails still in situ. So, regarding railways that have come and gone, yes, there's quite a lot of miniature railways that have closed. So if I hear a miniature railway is closing, I will usually try and get there before it closes, but like there's ones like this, I just didn't make it in time. But then the, the other thing is there's so many miniature railways anyway, and I of course want to go on all of them, so my plan is to try and gradually get to them all. I'm going to make a Henry's Adventure series, we'll call it Miniature Railway Britain, so where we'll gradually go and see all these miniature railways. There's been some near misses, like Brookside was talks it might close so I made an emergency visit thankfully it didn't so what we'll do we'll make this series called Miniature Railway Britain where I'll go and visit miniature railways that are still up and running and can still be enjoyed because you just sort of never know when you know for whatever reason they could close and then from now and then we'll make a few more videos more like this one where we'll go and look at miniature railways which unfortunately you can only enjoy in this way so there's quite a few of them. You may have seen the video when we were at Weymouth where we saw three disused railways in one. We saw, we walked a bit on the track bed of a miniature railway which closed um, a lot before my lifetime anyway, so I could never have gone on that one. But, you know, so they're, they're sort of, it's, this has made me think of two things. We'll do a series, you know, where I'll go and explore miniature railways that are running. We'll do a series where I'll go and explore miniature railways which, um, like this one, are no longer running into another rather narrow cutting now it's a bit more overgrown i think there's a a one lonely sleeper there 
I have a feeling we must be coming towards the end of the line, but I'm not entirely sure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry on walking along the track bed and um, I'll see what we find further on. So we've now just come through that narrow cutting where we were a minute ago. There appears to be behind us, there's this large wires course, which looks, you know, quite fun. And I think we've reached the end. This is feeling more kind of, you know, town park like. There's a, a lake there, and here is the old railway station. Completely trackless, but still fairly obvious it was a station. You can just see on where you'd have, so you'd have queued up to come on the train, you'd have come through this gate and you'd have got on the train, you'd have enjoyed either a steam hauled ride or a baby delta hauled ride around the park. I just want to walk to the very end of the track bed where so it looks like there was no turntable on this line, they just ran round at each end. That's the boating lake over there. Let's just have a look, see if have we come. Yeah, so it looks like it simply just ended like that there. So it's probably actually a shorter walk to go from here to the other end via the park than it is via the miniature railway. But of course it's more fun to discover the old miniature railway. So from the other end, I believe it's called Monday Hill, I think, this end. There's no station name board. Um, hope you enjoyed exploring this disused miniature railway and you never know. If uh, someone does decide let's reopen it, of course I'll be back to have a ride. So from Mark Heaton Park, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.